everyone so i just wanted to apologize in advance for the audio quality my laptop actually uh crapped itself like four days ago so i don't have anything to record my audio with aside from the actual camera i could use my phone but um i actually need my phone to read off the mit essays so just for background as i go and pull up these is that i started my essays in august and the application was due October 31st or November 1st, I forget which one, at 8.59 p.m. PST. So I had been working on these for a good couple of months and I really put my all into them. It was something that I did alongside my schoolwork. Um, I did have people read over it and edit, it, edit them just to see, you know, if I'm on the right track. And something I've really noticed about a lot of MIT essays that kind of puts it away from the Common App is that the MIT essays that you write tend to be more straightforward than the typical sort of college essay that you want to write. So if I were to give any advice is just to make your writing less fluffy and because there's such a limited amount of space that you have to write your essays, you should just get to the point immediately. Now that's not to say you shouldn't have any sort of creativity in your essays or any sort of nice elevated language, but it's better to sort of get to the point while sort of mixing it in with this good illustrious language so it doesn't kind of get lost in the sauce. So with the MIT essays, there's sort of kind of five themes to it. So one is fun, two is why MIT, three is community, four is personal background, and then five is challenge. And so I had actually quite a bit to say. So if you hadn't, if you haven't seen my initial video of sort of the stats and extracurriculars that got me into MIT, you might want to watch that first to give you kind of a background on where I'm coming from and who I am as a person since I won't be touching on that aside from what I mentioned in my essays. So let's give it a shot. One, we know you lead a busy life full of activities, many of which are required of you. Tell us about something you do simply for the pleasure of it, a hundred words or fewer. I don't measure life in minutes, but in songs. Emotions are expressed in instruments, bass heavy beats in anger, melancholic piano in sadness, dainty plucks of ukulele in love. I began writing and producing music in freshman year, also integrating music in my schoolwork. In AP English language, I wrote a rap based on the book The Hate You Give, which focused on identity. In a remix of a J. Cole song, I recited Robert Frost's The Road Not Taken as the introduction and added dialogue from the book, distorting and amplifying it to sound like a phone call. So background on this essay is that originally it was much longer, but the hundred words or fewer kind of threw me off. And so I really wanted to talk about my relationship with music and the way it progressed. But I realized I didn't have enough space for that, so I decided to do more tangible achievements and the way that music sort of helped me get through school, as that would be reflected in my teacher's letter of recommendation for me as well. So that's why I went for more tangible assignments as opposed to sort of an emotional aspect to music because I felt like they would get that in other places and I also linked my YouTube channel so it still provided that aspect of me as well as showing how music and school were kind of became integrated. Two, although you may not know yet what you want to major in, which department or program at MIT appeals to you and why? A hundred words or fewer. At MIT, I would pursue bioengineering and minor in biomedical engineering to further my understanding of the intricacies of biology with engineering. My interest in biomedical engineering started when I took the class in my sophomore year. Our first project, Send an Animal to Space, evolved into a larger research expedition where we explored the unique immunities of the tardigrade through the sugar tree hillos. Some classes I am interested in are the fundamentals of experimental b b molecular biology. B b b okay. Some classes I'm interested in are the fundamentals of experimental molecular biology and music technology. I would use MIT's variety of academic exploration classes to pursue more music-focused classes alongside my engineering ones. So my advice for typically any Y school essay that you're going to have to write is one, obviously introduce the major or minor you're interested in. Frankly, I'm, not, I'm no longer interested in 
pure biomedical engineering. In fact, I'm hoping to go into mechanical engineering with a concentration in biomedical devices at MIT, but this was just at the time of application. This is what I was interested in. And so I tied it back to an experience I had in school that sort of got me interested in it, which was a research project. And then that's when you bring in your own personal experience with what the school has to offer you, which is, I mentioned classes. In my YUSC essay, I mentioned specific programs that they had and so, um, groups that they had like Society of Women Engineers and the Myobenical Society and so if you're writing any Y university or Y college essay you should always bring in personal experience as well as note some classes or programs that the school offers you to show that you've done your research and to also show that you know you know the school and you like the school. Three, at MIT we bring people together to better the lives of others. MIT students work to improve their communities in different ways, from tackling the world's biggest challenges to being a good friend. Describe one way in which you have contributed to your community, whether in your family, the classroom, your neighborhood, etc. 200 to 250 words. In the summer of 2017, a Google memo was released to the public titled Google's Ideological Echo Chamber, a document that critiqued and argued against Google's diversity policies. This event motivated me to take action and highlight the importance of diversity within the STEM fields, bringing discussion of social issues into the scope of my high school. I created the Equality in STEM Club, eSTEM, a club dedicated to inciting necessary dialogue regarding social justice in STEM. In our bi-weekly meetings, I led discussions and debates on topics like the gender wage gap and affirmative action. I often recruit guest speakers, with a notable meeting being Harvey Mudd's president, Maria Klawe? Klaw? I actually don't know how to pronounce her name. When I was talking to her, I addressed her as Maria. Um, so I'm so sorry if I just butchered her name. I was corrected by one of my friends who's going to Harvey Mudd saying it's Klawe. I don't know if he was actually lying to me or if that's the truth, so sorry. Her presentation emphasized the importance of mental health awareness, integration of art and STEM, and increasing the number of girls in computer science. These talks ultimately inspired my senior project for eSTEM, a mentor program a mentorship program called STEM Tours. In STEM Tours, high school seniors mentor middle school students on their science projects. We familiarize them with laboratory equipment and prepare them for school and regional competitions. Behind the scenes, I've created committees to review mentor and mentee applications, communicate with faculty, and ultimately work to orchestrate the functioning of this mentorship. I'm organizing bi-weekly meetings with mentors and mentees to track their progress and satisfaction with the program. As for my own mentee, I'm working with Kieran and her project on the antibacterial properties of essential oils. So that one was more narrative-like, sort of, you know, introducing how I got inspired or inspired by sort of the events that were taking place and sort of use that as my motivation to create projects within my school. And then at that time, STEM tours was actually just getting started up so I didn't really have much to say I just talked about sort of the leadership skills behind it and I'm proud to say that we actually got I think five five or six kids to states for the science fair through our mentorship program and it's actually going to continue next year because I have some juniors who are interested in it so that meant a lot to me because I really wasn't sure if this project was going to make it that far and it was something that really meant a lot to me so I'm just happy that it worked out. <laughs> Four, describe the world you come from. For example, your family, clubs, school, community, city, or town. How has that world shaped your dreams and aspirations? I come from a world where a family was not composed of a mama and a dada, but a mama and her mama, and where being Filipino was something I hid. I'm the only daughter of a divorced Filipino woman whose disconnect from her culture influenced my understanding of it. In my eyes, we were tools of service, we are your maids, nurses, babysitters, afterthoughts. I lived with this perspective until high school, where growing popularity of Filipino social media icons like Justine Bidicon and Asia Jackson made me feel more comfortable in my identity. Around the same time, I created a nonprofit organization with my friends called the Literacy Movement. For our first project, I suggested that we collect books to donate to schools in the Philippines. When we went to hand deliver the books and school supplies, I gained a better understanding of the Filipino people. We are a people whose long history with colonialism has made it difficult to find our identity, but throughout the years, I've come to know who I am. I no longer look at my country with a scornful eye, but a critical one, now incorporating my heritage into my schoolwork. 
I've written a thesis and dissertation on colorism in the Philippines and presented a speech about my complex relationship with my culture. We are an amalgamation of various countries whose uniqueness is seen in its foods, language, and people. Through all this, I can now say that I'm proud to be Filipino. So this is one of the harder hitting essays. I know I said don't be too fanciful with your, es with your essay writing, and I think this really demonstrates how you can sort of implement that kind of elevated language, but still get to the point on time, because that was something I really had to work on, because this originally was, I think, a 750 to 800 word essay and I only had 200 to 250 words so I really had to cut it down and scrape it down to the real meat of what I was trying to say but I think it really showed a more emotional and vulnerable side to me as well as sort of integrated an accomplishment I had and an extracurricular I was talking about. 5. Tell us about the most significant challenge you faced or something that didn't go according to plan. How did you manage the situation? So. Before I get into this essay, I actually wrote this essay eight or nine times because for me, I did not know exactly what to write about. We didn't know whether to do it in a STEM-based approach or if we should do something more emotional because originally I was going to write it about the suicide of my friend in our high school earlier this year, but we decided against that because it seemed to be a very emotional thing. and based on the phrasing of the question, it seemed like a significant challenge where you face something important that didn't go to plan sort of refers to something more academically based or something more tangible as opposed to emotionally. This was the culmination of my eight weeks as an analytical chemistry intern at Boeing, the poster session. Here, Boeing engineers from nearly all fields evaluated intern posters. I performed scratch tests on painted submarine panels to evaluate the adhesion of different primers and bend tests on coated metal strips to determine the most flexible epoxy resin to be used to label missiles. Missiles? Missiles. <laughs> Yet there was a lingering feeling of ineptitude, where the dread of inadequacy haunted me for the majority of my time at Boeing. I recall the time when I was assigned to a physics project by a Boeing engineer, where, because of my inexperience, I had struggled to understand it. It was the first time I truly felt like I didn't belong at Boeing. Where other students could have easily completed the project, I had spent hours studying the foundation of physics from a textbook. As a judge approached me, I pushed these thoughts away and braced myself. As he asked questions, I found myself readily explaining the details and nuances of my project from beginning to end. I even discussed other projects I participated in, such as evaluating the effect of cleaning chemicals with 3D printed objects and graphing the heat absorption of ablators of different materials. I realized that my shortcomings in physics, while disappointing, didn't represent my time at Boeing. In these eight weeks, I had gained experience not only in analytical chemistry, but in chemical, mechanical, and aerospace engineering. So that essay was sort of just a little yeehaw to Boeing because uh, my Boeing experience was pretty lit, um, not gonna lie. And I did want to incorporate Boeing somehow into my essays. So now just kind of going over how to approach the supplemental essays as I don't really have any advice for my common app essay because frankly I don't think my common app essay was very good. I didn't have anyone look over it before I submitted it and I just kind of went for it and I applied to two schools, two schools via the common app that was Duke and USC and I got rejected by Duke and accepted by USC so it had a 50% <laughs> acceptance rate for my common app essay so if you do want to read that it's kind of messy and i could go back and critique what i would have done differently for a video if you'd like so how i wanted to approach my supplemental essays with mit is that since these are the only essays they're going to get what i did beforehand is i sort of highlighted what i wanted to mention or incorporate somehow in these essays by looking at my extracurriculars so I knew I wanted to put in the literacy movement, I knew I wanted to put in Boeing, I knew I wanted to put in E-STEM and STEM tours, and I knew I wanted to put in music. And so with those four elements, I tried to figure out which essay would get which element so that all aspects of me were represented in these essays. Because I felt like these were really important parts of me that deserved more explanation and more sort of emphasis. And so that's how I really recommend you approach supplemental essays or essays like MIT's where it's the only part they'll get of you. Now, if you're writing a common app, then I don't know if you want to do that because common apps should be more narrative-like from what I've read and should sort of either tell a story as opposed to sort of run like a resume. Whereas MIT ones, these are the only content that they'll get of you, so 
it's okay to just bang it out like that. In terms of when to start your essays, I think to each their own. I personally started in August. I don't recommend that you start your early action essays in October because I feel like that's too late. But if you are going to do a regular decision essay, then you can just write them August or something like that, even later. I had a friend who wrote his early decision, JHU, in February because he saw a play or something like that and creativity instantly struck him. So if you do have that, just go ahead. In terms of how to prepare for these, um, what I did was I jotted a lot of different memories I had down and practiced writing over the summer just to get into that habit of talking about yourself in a non-narcissistic way, which I think is a skill that a lot of people have to learn. Learn how to brag about yourself without making it blatantly obvious that you're bragging about yourself, and then you should be good. So that's all I have for today. I hope this was kind of helpful for any of you who are thinking of applying to MIT or if you just want more insight about me and I hope you enjoyed. Thanks.